with an expectation and know that God is able to deliver, to touch us, to pour out His Spirit. Whatever we're in need of tonight, my God is able to supply that need for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, and turn into your Bibles there to Psalms 108. Amen. Psalms 108. Don't forget our... I know we're not, there's not many here tonight. Um, Nancy mentioned about churches, you know, Central. I was sharing with her because she didn't know they didn't have Sunday night. I, I know they've been trying to bring back um, at least once a month they've been having Sunday night service. But um, it really isn't, I mean, it's the church because the church is the people. Um, so, but the reason that there's no church is because nobody comes. This is what we have when no one comes. This is where we're at spiritually. It is a sign of where the church is at. You know, we used to remember as a little girl, I can remember being on the church bus. Dad and Grandma, whoever was there, you know, talking about... We used to talk about the Methodist church. How they didn't have church on Wednesday night. And they didn't have church on Sunday night. But here we are. We don't have a desire to be found in the house of God. We've fallen away from where we used to be in our first love with the Lord. There's a sign where our relationship is with God. It is only when it's convenient for us. And that is not where the Lord wants us to be. We're to have a steadfastness. We're to be constantly in relationship and commune with the Lord. And when we find ourselves drifting away, then we will see it in the church house. Amen? And this is what's happening. It's not a, uh, and you know, sometimes I, 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 Lord, I'm like, I'm taking it personally here. But really, it's a sign of our relationship with God. Because if you want a steadfastness with the Lord, if you want a hunger and you want more from the Lord, you're going to find yourself in God's house. Dear God, help us tonight. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Having our heart fixed on the Lord. Amen. Psalms 108. Praise the Lord. Psalms 108 starting there at the, first, the very beginning. Oh God, my heart is fixed. My, I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise Thee, O Lord, among the people. And I will sing praises unto Thee among the nations. For Thy mercy is great above the heavens, and Thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. Be Thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and Thy glory above all the earth that thy beloved may be delivered. Listen to that. That my beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand and answer me. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that even though there are not many here tonight, I know that you are here in our midst, Lord. I feel your presence. I know that you are with us, Lord, and I just pray that your spirit will go forth. Lord, touch each one that has made the effort and the commitment to be found in your house tonight. Lord, stir it up in our hearts, and Lord, let our heart be fixed on you, Jesus. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. come down and have your way, Lord, and reveal your word yes. unto us, I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This is a psalm of David. David cried out to the Lord, it's a good thing 
When we cry out to God. Hallelujah. When we make our petition be made known unto God. You know, a lot of times you'll get flyers in the mail. You'll get envelopes. and Or even, you know, sometimes on social media, you know, they'll have something where you can go to this link and that link. And you can sign a petition. You can put your name on the dotted line. And, you know, this is a petition that we would give our all to the Lord. Just as David did. He cried unto God. He gave all that he had to God. And he looked to the God of the heavens that was able to meet every need. And he wanted to give his heart. He wanted to give his desires. And he expressed himself unto the Lord. Amen. God wants us to express ourselves to Him. Right. He wants us to give everything unto Him. When we have a heart that is fixed on the Lord, and when we cry out to Him, God will hear us tonight. I am so thankful in the Word of the Lord in Psalms 34 it says, The righteous cry and the Lord heareth yes. and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Amen. As Bill was sharing, how many got some troubles? Amen. We've all got some troubles in this life that we live in. We are going to be faced with troubles. But thanks be to God that we can come to Him and we can cry out to Him and His Word declares that He will hear us and that He will deliver us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God, hallelujah, that we can look to tonight, as it says in this scripture, David declared unto God, he looked unto him and he said, my heart is fixed on you, hallelujah. Now I want you to just, I, I got the little meaning so that you know what fixed means. Now a lot of times when we think of fixed, we think of, you know, fixing something, you know, something is broken and we fix it, you know, we, we turn it into what it needs to be or we, we take what is broken and fix it. But this is a different meaning. It means to be firm and it means to be stable. It's sort of the same uh, situation, you know, as uh, Bill was trying to tune his guitar. He said, I need a screwdriver so that I can fix it. And, and, you know, make it sound better. It's it's established. It's stable now. Uh, I can play this uh, this guitar and I have free, freedom and it sounds the way that it needs to sound. It's the same way with our heart tonight. We need to have a stable heart. Uh, we need to have a firm heart with the Lord Jesus Christ so that nothing will be moved. Uh, nothing will waver nothing will break us uh, nothing will turn us away but our heart will be fixed on God hallelujah thank you Jesus the one one way that you are going to have a heart that is fixed on the Lord is when you find yourself in praise unto God. This is one thing that we can take a lesson from, from David tonight. Is that he found himself in worship with the Lord. He found himself singing praises unto his God. Hallelujah. He didn't want to forget the good things that God had done for him. And I'm here to tell you, when we have come into his house, uh, we are preparing our heart. We are preparing our life. When we give adoration and when we give praise to God, he will come in and he will inhabit the praises of you tonight. When we take the time to rely on Him. See, this is one thing we've got to get the, the, the meaning and the understanding that David was relying on the Lord. He wasn't relying on his own strength. Uh, he wasn't relying on the things uh, that maybe were in the physical. No, he was relying on a great and big God who was 
is able to deliver him and to set him free from all the troubles that he was facing. And that's one thing we've got to know. God is wanting us to rely on Him. To put our attention on the Lord. Boy, it's something how there are so many people today. And even in the church, we've got our minds so full of everything else. But I want you to know, if you have a heart that is fixed on God, you're going to have to spend some time alone in the presence of the Lord so you won't let the chaos and the noise and the sound of the world get in your heart and to get in your mind and distract you from keeping your heart fixed on Him. Amen. We've got to take some time. I just shared the other day. I truly believe there should be moments. There should be some songs of praise. There should be some music in your home, in your car. You know, a lot of times we're wondering why we're face down with troubles or we are facing, you know, people that face depression. You know, it's even coming to the church because we have allowed things to come in that should not be in our life. And just from day to day, amen, I will admit it, just the day-to-day -day mundane of, you know, getting up and going along with your routine of life, going to work, doing this at home, doing that, going to the store, whatever it is, you've got to put God in your agenda. You've got to take the time to have a relationship with the Lord. You've got to be in commune fellowship with Jesus. There's one thing that we will find ourselves distracted and our hearts will not be steadfast if we do not have a relationship and alone time with the Lord. Second Peter says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. We are living in a world today where there is no commitment. And I'm not just saying, you know, that we just do everything, you know, a legalistic. No, no, we are to follow the Lord and we've got to be living a sacrifice of praise unto God. And we are living, hallelujah, our bodies are a living sacrifice, giving all that we have to God, even when sometimes we don't feel like it. Because there's going to be those moments. We live in a body of flesh. This flesh doesn't want to do the things that the Word of God tells us to do. It is a constant fight. But we know that if through Jesus Christ, when we are fixed on Him, He's going to give us that fervency. He's going to give us that passion. He's going to give us that desire to follow Him because we are in full relationship with our Lord and Savior. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The best antidote or the best medicine that you'll ever get if you're worrying tonight as Tanya was sharing, you know, all the things. You know, we do. We worry about our families. We, we worry about their condition, their spiritual walk, where they're at. Dear God, if it's not there, we need to ask God to put a uh, concern in our heart, most of all, that we won't worry, but that we'll give it to God and we will know that He will bring it to pass in our lives. Amen. But the best thing that you can do with worry is turn it into worship. Lift up your hands. There's been many a times where I was faced with situations, but I found myself, Lord, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to, uh, you know, destroy my, myself over this thing. No, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to glorify you, and I'm going to praise you, and even in every circumstance of my life. That's what we've got to do. 
We've got to be awakened. We've got to know that we can look to God. I'm so glad that no matter what time of the day, the you know, David declared in this scripture that he was up early. He awakened early to give God praise. Now I will say one thing. There's just something about in the morning when you put your day first with the Lord. I have done it. I'm, I watched my father. He was one to say, hey, we got to get up and we've got to pray early in the morning. He was a man of prayer. He came to this church 5 o'clock in the morning praying and seeking the Lord. And I want you to know when you put an effort in putting the Lord first in your life, great things are going to come forth. Thank you, Lord. Great things are going to come forth in your life. You are going to see great and mighty things when you take the time looking to Him and trusting Him. But I am so thankful I can look to Him in the morning. I can look to Him in the afternoon. I can look to Him in the evening. And I can look to Him in the midnight hour. No matter what time of the day, my God hears me and I look to Him and I put my trust in the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. I want to rely on the Lord. I don't want to put my focus on myself. You know? You know, we were talking about sometimes we, we all have those days, I will admit. Uh, I have those days where sometimes we just, we have a pity party. I, I can remember when we would get upset as little kids, you know, and the, and we'd start crying, you know, and they, mom would go, oh, let's all have a pity party. And then I'll go, oh, they all start crying, they all start crying together. And before you know it, you know, you didn't like it, so you just stop, you stop crying. But we all have those days where we have a pity party. Amen? Amen? We've got to know we can't put our focus on ourselves. This thing is not about you and me. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. It's about our relationship with the Lord. We've got to get the focus back to where it belongs. It belongs on the Lord. Right. When we put our focus on ourselves, we're going to find ourselves in trouble. We're going to find ourselves in a desperate place. I can always, you know, remember when I met Shannon, the one scripture verse that his dad always told him about was, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. When you think you stand, when you think that you're good on your own, I want you to know you're in for a great fall. Because the Bible tells us we cannot lean on our own ability. We can't lean on ourselves. We've got to put our trust in Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. He is the one that can put the He put this thing in motion and He's going to finish it. Yes. Amen. He's going to finish it. And what all that matters is where we are at in our relationship with the Lord. Amen. I was reading real quick. Turn to, to Luke. Luke chapter 18. I want to read this because this, this is very important that we keep a focus on the Lord. That our eyes are fixed on the Lord and not on ourselves. Jesus talked about this in Luke chapter 18 of verse Starting at verse 9. It, was, it says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, and the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, are extortioners and unjust and adulterers or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week and I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. We've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. We've got to know that it's His help. It's His strength. It's His love. It's His power. It's not nothing in ourselves. We've got to sometimes look in the spiritual mirror and say, Lord, I am nothing without You. I am a wretched sinner and I need the mercy. I need the mercies of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and I need your power yes. and your glory. Right. Yeah. That's right. They See, yeah. that's the difference between the, the, the Pharisee and the prayer of David. See, David, when he prayed, uh, it might sound like he's a little, you know, confident, but his confidence was relying on the Lord and not relying on himself. Amen. Where the Pharisee was relying on himself and looking all at me, me, me. We cannot put our trust in ourselves. We can't put our trust in this world. We've got to put our trust in the Lord God, Jehovah, hallelujah, who will help us and that will give us the victory. Amen. Amen. You know, it's times where, you know, when you're not feeling well, I was just saw where someone posted on, on Facebook, they, they, you know, it's something how you... <laughs> Every little detail. Now, I might go through and look at things, but you know, I, I don't need to tell the whole world I'm I'm sick. Uh, you know, I don't need to tell the whole world, you know, how my day was, you know. I I can look to the Lord and know the Lord. You know, some people, you know, they like that, but somebody put on there how they were sick, and then all the people that commented on how they could, you know, do this and do that. This is what you need to do first, and you need to do this second, and then, you know, they were going through all these lists of remedies that they could do to feel better. And what we've got to know is our remedy with the Lord, our fellowship with the Lord, uh, our medicine that we need to take from the Lord, hallelujah, is spending time in, re in commune with Him. Uh, it's spending time in prayer. Uh, it's spending time in the Word. Uh, it's looking unto the Lord and know, hallelujah, if I do that, I know that my heart is going to be well. Uh, I know that my relationship with others is going to be well because I'm looking to a God who is able to do it for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Putting our trust and our faith in Him and not just with words, not just with you know things that come out of our mouth, but it's not really there, you know. There's times where we come into prayer and we come in, you know, and we can just say a lot of words, but we want to make sure, we want to be like David. We want to have a prayer that comes from the heart. We want to have a relationship. We want to praise Him with all of our heart, not just with our lips. That's what Jesus said. He said, the people draw with nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Dear Lord, I don't want my heart to be far from the Lord. I don't want your heart to be far from the Lord. Have your heart fixed on the Lord. Sing praises unto Him, knowing that this is the thing that's going to see you through the troubles and the storms and the valleys that we face. We can be lifted up, as Jesus said, when we rely on Him. He's going to lift us up. Amen. He's going to give us the strength that we need. He's going to give us the power to overcome. Hallelujah. And that's what I like about this right here. It says, Be thou, in verse 5, Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth. When you put your focus on the Lord, then it will be just like it is in verse 6, that thy beloved may be delivered. Hallelujah. 
Say with thy right hand and answer me. What's he saying? When I give it all to you, uh, when I give my heart, when I give my praise, uh, and when I put my trust in you, uh, you are going to deliver me. Uh, you will set me free from the chains. Uh, you will set me free from the mundane of this life. Uh, and you will give me purpose and passion and power in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Put your trust. Put your faith. Focus your heart to be steadfast on the Lord. Hallelujah. He's the one that will give us the strength. If we keep exalting Him and lifting Him up, He is going to have a, 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 His heart. As Shannon said before, you know, of a... The, the truck driver that came in and he said all these things. One thing he said, he goes, I wouldn't believe in God unless he sat down here on this pulpit or on this pew beside me. And before the end of that whole that whole time that he shared with with the truck driver, he just said, It's time to pray. And he said when he began to pray for that truck driver, he looked, you know, Shannon says he, he peeked a little and he saw that he was crying. He was, There was tears coming down. The Holy Spirit was touching him. And when he ended that prayer, he asked that driver, would you like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because he didn't even believe in God when he came up into the chapel. But he turned to Shin and he said, yes, yes I would. And he said the sinner's prayer. And, and, and Shannon always says, he goes, he didn't have to sit on the pew. He sat on the throne of his heart. There's where Jesus wants to be. He wants to be on the throne of our hearts. He wants to have fellowship and communication. And he wants to have a relationship with us. If we will have our heart fixed. On God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand.